Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Jason Matthew. This is the continuation video on the series that I started as Understanding RF and uh, this will be the uh, fourth video in it. We covered uh, how to uh, find the right uh, TX power level for the AP um, compared to uh, the client on the other side. We also covered how, what are the different type of uh, AP mounting can be done uh, for the internal APs. In one of the video, we talked about uh, how the attenuation levels are going to impact and the different wall types are going to impact your RF. In another video, we covered how uh, the ceiling height, the mounting height is going to change the RF in the background. So we covered all those things. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, 3802. Uh, we already explained everything about um, the internal antenna model. This one we will specifically we will go for uh, external antenna one and uh, we'll see how this one is going to uh, work with each antenna type. So we have multiple antenna types available but uh, here in the simulation point of view in Akahu we have four, four antenna types available and uh, I'm going to show one by one uh, in this list and how the RF works in the background. So before we get started, let's uh, get the configuration side or get the details about the AP. As you can see here, I'm, I'm using 3802 uh, external antenna type and everything is uh, ceiling mounted. Um, like I'm selecting it as a ceiling mounted and height is this one and power level is set as uh, 11 dBm for all the access points in this particular floor plan. And uh, for this particular um, AP, uh, I'm going to use the antenna type of antenna 2524DWR. So this is the antenna type I'm going to use for this particular AP. And uh, let me take the another one, next one. For uh, this AP, I'm using a different antenna type and antenna type is 2566D4M. 4MR, so that's a different antenna type I'm using. So I already uh, renamed all the APs uh, based on the antenna type I selected here. So you can uh, figure out which antenna is used in the uh, background uh, with the name itself. All the APs are having same capabilities. It's the same model. All the APs are having same power level set in the background and uh, we have antenna types different on each and every AP. So when we uh, talk about um, um, the antenna type right the one of the thing you have to keep it in mind is this uh, EARP value as you can see in this particular uh, uh, tool tape you can see that it's completely depends on the antenna gain this particular antenna type is having uh, antenna gain of 4 then that's the value coming up here as EARP let me go and uh, show you the next AP so as you can see here the same uh, AP with a different antenna the antenna gain change here this particular antenna type is having a antenna gain of 6 dBi and uh, that is uh, getting into 70 dBm so the sensitivity level kind of thing is changing on this particular uh, antenna type and uh, this antenna type is uh, 2566D okay so let me show you the next one here also you can see that it's having uh, same uh, 6 dbi uh, antenna gain and you are getting 17 dbm uh, as a earp we already discussed about earp uh, concept in the uh, in some of the other videos so you can refer that uh, to get more info on that and uh, this particular guy this is a high density uh, kind of uh, uh, antenna antenna so uh, you, what you can see here, this one is having EARP of 24. So, uh, so based on the power level, you have to consider your antenna gain also in the background. Then only you will get the actual EARP uh, value. So you have to keep this one in mind based on the antenna type, the EARP value is changing. Even though your uh, TX power level is same, the antenna gain is going to give a different uh, view altogether. So. I'll show you that in the graphical view, but you keep this in uh, this one in mind. Your antenna gain is different on each and every uh, access point model and access point uh, antenna type. If internally is having something, external will have something else. 
So let me show you uh, one more thing. Uh, let me add one AP with internal antenna and show you the uh, antenna gain on that. So I just added one access point here. So uh, let me go into that access point details. As you can see here, uh, this is a 3802i. Uh, that's an internal antenna type. And uh, this guy is having 11 dBm as power, uh, TX power set. Uh, then uh, you have uh, four, sorry, five dBi. Um, uh, in the antenna gain and you have EARP of 60. When we uh, when we see that uh, the internal one is having uh, 16 and here EARP is 15. So it's using an external antenna but uh, it's having only 4 dBi as a uh, antenna gain and you have 15 and at the same time the internal one is having 60. So there are there are differences between uh, access points based on your AP uh, antenna capabilities, right? So you, you should understand what is the difference between uh, antenna types and how the same AP is going to behave in your network. So that's why I just uh, show the internal one. Uh, I don't want to cover this internal one now. So let me delete it. Okay, so the internal one is removed and uh, now we will start with uh, each and every uh, antenna type, the four antenna types available here. So let's uh, go in and uh, see uh, what is the signal strength and everything. So uh, I'm going to uh, enable uh, signal strength view. I'm going to put signal strength here. As you can see here, I have this marking uh, based on the color coding, uh, based on the signal strength, it will show that color coding. But uh, this is actually blocking this particular AP, so I'm going to hide this guy. Okay, so now uh, whatever signal strength you are going to see here is uh, minus 67. So I'm not going to play around with that. But now uh, let me uh, show you one AP here. So I selected it and you can see that um, 360 degree coverage of this guy, right? So it's having an antenna type of 2524DWR and uh, that antenna type is like this let me just show you that so as you can see in this picture so i added one uh, picture comment in the akahu itself so that i don't have to roam around in uh, multiple pages and all so these are the antenna types we are talking about when we say antenna 2524dw okay so this is the antenna type which is just a simple external antenna uh, on your ap Okay, so this is similar, the, uh, the capabilities of this antenna is similar to the internal antenna on the other side. So it's almost uh, similar to that. And let me uh, open the next guy and uh, next one is uh, this one. So this antenna type is 2566D4M. And as you can see here, the antenna pattern is changed and uh, based on your antenna direction, angle and all those things, it will change. But this is not the one who is going to provide 360 degree coverage. This is not like in our omnidirectional antenna. So this is omnidirectional and this is not omnidirectional. And you can see the picture here. So I'm going to show you that picture. So uh, this is the antenna type we are talking about. This will look like this and uh, it will give a coverage like this. So it's kind of a, a directional antenna uh, from one wall side you can point to the other side. So this is the second antenna type available on uh, 3800. Uh, not only on 3800, this is supported on multiple AP models. Uh, with the name, maybe the model number changes also. You have the same kind of uh, pattern coming from a different antenna. So it's completely up to you. You can even use third party antennas. These are the antennas coming from Cisco side. So it's completely up to you. But I just want to show you that, okay, your, uh, uh, your antenna pattern changes based on the uh, antenna type you are going to choose. And uh, this is the third one. Again, uh, this particular uh, antenna type is 2566. Uh, double six P four W, and uh, as you can see here, this pattern is completely different than the other two. And let me show you the picture here. So uh, this is the antenna type you are talking about. This can be utilized in multiple uh, ways. When we talk about the antennas like this one, this is completely depends on how you are going to mount this particular uh, the antenna. So your IP can be hidden somewhere and your antenna will be outside. So it can be a ceiling mounting, it can be a wall mounting, it can be a directional kind of uh, pointing to some area or something. It's completely up to you how you want to mount it. But 
whenever you mount it this is the way it's going to behave so this is the another antenna um, type available on 3802e then let me go to the uh, final one so this is the other antenna that is having a high antenna gain and everything so this antenna type is antenna 2513p4m and this is uh, again kind of high density kind of uh, antenna and uh, with a really good uh, antenna gain we already seen that and uh, let's see the ap uh, let's see the antenna type so this is the antenna type you are referring to so this is little bit uh, big a big antenna uh, and it's uh, like it's kind of a double size of your ap and uh, it can actually give uh, better directional uh, capabilities and uh, better high density handling here and you can see the difference between the uh, the other two right so it can actually handle uh, very well on your network side so we already seen that uh, let me let me show you that antenna capabilities again as you uh, as you can see here this one is covering a lot of areas with the uh, single antenna and you can see what is the reason for that so this guy it can uh, support up to 24.4 dbm in earp because you have a 13 dbi antenna gain on that antenna so that changes everything compared to the other other three here it's kind of uh, covering the level of the area on your side right so these are the uh, main antenna types uh, used in the deployments if you're using Cisco antennas and all. And uh, these are the uh, different ways it will treat your network uh, in your site. So be, be aware of uh, the different, uh, different types of antenna types and choose the right antenna for your uh, access point based on the requirement. So it's completely depends on where you are going to put this antenna. The next thing I want to uh, show in this video is uh, how the regulatory domain is going to affect your network, right? So we already covered that on uh, the, uh, with an example of 3800.02 and we already talked about what is the different regulatory domains, how it's going to impact uh, your network and how you will choose the uh, right access point for your network. We already talked about all those things in a different uh, video sets uh, in, in the same series of Understanding RF. So here I just want to show you that uh, how the regulatory domain is going to impact your network. So this is how uh, one IP looks like in your network when you have uh, your regulatory domain that allows you to use uh, the maximum power level available on that IP or the maximum capability of that IP. But that is not the uh, true story of all the regions or all the regulatory domains. So we already explained the theory. I want to just show you the graphical uh, view of that. So this is uh, again, uh, the simulation is done using 3802. Uh, and as you can see here, this particular uh, AP is running with 23 uh, dBm. So I'm not going into the boundary. So I'm let me go and reduce this further. Then let me put this one into 60. I, uh, I put the uh, limit as uh, 60 here and you can see this particular AP with 23 dBm, it's able to cover 193 feet. So that's how, like it's kind of a open area and you are getting uh, a full, uh, full power level uh, as per your regulatory domain and you are able to cover 193 feet or with that particular uh, power level but uh, as i mentioned earlier you are going to get uh, different regulated domain limitations and um, this one this particular ap is functioning with 17 dbm when your uh, regulated domain limits your power level into uh, 17 dbm this is what you are going to get uh, with 23 dbm you are getting um, uh, 60 dBm up to 193 feet and with the 17 dBm it got reduced into 95.9 like it's 96 feet. So uh, what I want to tell you that is uh, this can be your regulated domain limitation it can be your RRM too. If you have RRM enabled and if you have wrong settings on TX power level minimum and maximum values this is what going to happen in your network. Same APs you are expecting this APs to function with some power level and it is actually going down with those RRM settings, wrong RRM settings or wrong AP placements and you will end up in this condition. So this is the second one and third one is like uh, 14 dBm. The AP is functioning with TX power, uh, power level of uh, 14 dBm 
and uh, you can see uh, it's reduced further and it's 67 so let me enable everything in one shot so now we have all the ap's uh, enabled with uh, signal sim uh, simulation the first one with 23 dbm it was able to cover 193 feet second one with 17 dbm it's able to cover 95 the third one with 14 dbm it's going with 67 and the fourth one with power level 11 dbm it's covering 47 and the last one uh, is covering with 8 dbm it's going with 33 feet so the same ap with the different power level or the limitations based on your regulatory domain it can reduce your coverage and you have to plan the ap placement based on that so if you have to run your ap's with 11 dbm your plan should be gone with level dbm so your ap planning should not be done uh, uh, something like i i, I seen in my experience i seen this kind of scenarios you will take one autocad file or something or you will take a printout of your floor plan and you will just mark the ap's with pen pen or pencil and you will just place the ap's based on that because you are thinking that okay you are going to get the same ap everywhere and every ap will function in the same way that is not true you have regulatory domains that controls the power level and ap capabilities you have rrm running in the background if you are if you are choosing the right power level it will be working fine if you are not using that it can be anything it can be a complete mess so when you plan it you plan it properly and get with uh, proper settings proper ap placement so that you will be okay uh, in your future uh, or you will be getting the right performance from the wireless and everyone will be happy with the wireless deployment so i hope uh, this one help you to understand the graphical view of the regulatory domain and rrm power level settings i hope uh, this one will help you to choose the right one in your network thank you for watching